The NASCAR Pinty Series is back on the ovals. We're at the Crown Jewel to Casa Motor Speedway, and it's time for some of the best short track racing in the country. Last week at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park, it was short track racing, road course style, when Ranger and Lacroix dueled for the lead. When the smoke cleared, LP Dumoulin sped to victory. Canada's top short track series brings the muscle and the hustle to Jucasa Motor Speedway. Welcome to the True North, strong and fast. Hello and welcome to Nell's Corners, Ontario, the home of the 5 8 mile Jucasa Motor Speedway. As we prepare for the Rankin Construction 200 for the NASCAR Pinty Series, I'm Dave Bradley. Along with me is Adam Ross. Both Todd Lewis and Clinton Jeffrey will be patrolling the pits for us here tonight. But, Adam, what more can we say about the, the old crown jewel that's been freshly polished? Dave, Alex Nagy and his team have this place looking absolutely perfect. And NASCAR Canada has made some changes. Tonight's going to be the first dual brake race that we've ever had in our series. And we're going to explain more about that as the race goes on. Well, as we get ready, we see that man, L.P. Dumoulin, who has top spot in the points based on his win at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park in round number one. Mark antoine Cameron sits second in the point standings, but Dave, I have a feeling we're going to see the leaderboard shuffle after tonight's race. Lots of new faces here tonight. With that, let's head downstairs for tonight's command. Drivers, start your engines. There is the pole sitter, Andrew Ranger, the 23rd time in his NASCAR career. He will be starting up front in a NASCAR race. Donald Teach, another strong runner here at Jucasa Motor Speedway, quick in qualifying. We'll have a number of onboard looks. Kerry Mix, driver of the Leland, 0-2 Ford gives the thumbs up. He's ready to go. We'll be on board as well with Jason White in the Powder Ventures 28. And we have some very cool stories to tell you about over the course of this race, but let's take a look at qualifying for the E3 Spark Plug Pole Award and Andrew Ranger's Silky Smooth. He blistered a lap, Dave, in qualifying. No big surprise, as you said, his 23rd pole in the series. And your VP Racing Fuel starting lineup is Ranger and Donald Teach on the front row. Row number two has Cole Powell, the youngster in the three, Kevin Lacroix in the 74. Row number three, Mark Antoine Cameron on the inside with Alex Tagliani in the 18 machine starting alongside. DJ Kennington and Anthony Simone make up row four. Row number five, as we take a look back, as LP Dumoulin in the 47. There is Pete Shepard returning to the series in the 79. Row six, rookie Connor James in the 97, and another rookie, Brett Taylor, in the 46. Back to row seven is Adam Martin in the Johnsonville 19, and Jean-Francois Dumoulin in the Spectra Premium 04. Kerry Mix in the 02, along with Brad Graham in the 56. And rounding out the field, it'll be Jason White in the 28, and Joey McComb in the number one. There you see the 79 of Pete Shepard, an interesting paint scheme. He's paying homage to his father who raced here many, many years ago. And Dave, let's take a look at the E3 Spark Plugs race analysis. 200 laps on this 5 8 mile oval, and there's going to be two breaks in this race. It's a completely new format. For a final time, before we go green, let's get an update on some of the stories. Clint? Well, young Connor James, this is his first big league NASCAR race. He's got some veteran teams supporting him. He cut his teeth at sunset. They're just looking to log laps today. Watch Connor James in the 97 tonight. A little more information on the 0-2 before we go green. Kerry Mix and the team pulled the car out of line after qualifying because of a vibration. They've been battling it since preseason testing. They hope it's resolved itself. They tighten the car up a little bit because it's super loose. They'll drop to the back, but hope to move forward after this. Hope to. You can almost guarantee to see that Leland Industry 0-2 moving up through the pack. Kerry Mix back on an oval. It's been a couple of years since he's consistently run ovals in the Binti series, but you don't forget those things. No, you sure don't, Dave. And how about Brett Taylor, the driver from Calgary, Alberta? A cool trickle throwback scheme on the number 46. We're ready to go racing at Jucasa. Green flag in the air from Tim Kasser of Napa Welland. Sounds of horsepower coming to life down the back straightaway. Already Cole Powell muscling his way to the inside of the Surkri Acura number 
24 of Donald Teach as we ride on board the number 24. It was a great start for the inside row. And you can hear the tires breaking traction into the corner, Dave. A very, very hot afternoon. The temperature has started to drop just a little bit. And look at DJ Kennington and the Castor Ledge Dodge getting a little physical in the early going. You know, you can run down to the white line in the corners. Once you get under it, you lose some of that banking. It's tough to hold on to the car down there as we ride along with LP Dumoulin. Dumoulin finished third in the inaugural NASCAR Pinty Series race here at Jucasa Motor Speedway last year. Was hoping for big things. Didn't have the qualifying effort that he was looking for here today, but he felt confident in the car, knew he had speed in that WeatherTech Dodge. Did you see Alex Tagliani in the 18? Checks his mirror as soon as he comes off the corner. He wants to see what LP is up to. Then his eyes forward at where he's going. LP's filling that mirror. That's exactly what he's doing right now. But the Rona EpiPen, number 18 of Alex Tagliani, is holding his own. Battle for third now as Teach back on the bottom lane and has found some speed once again in the 24. Kevin Lacroix in the bumper-to-bumper -bumper 74. Still looking for his first win on an oval track. He's come so close, but the speed, Dave, is definitely there. It's really hard to believe that statement. And now Teach gets up underneath the bumper. I don't believe there was any contact, but looking to get a run here on the front straightaway, and he will pick up third spot underneath Kevin Lacroix. And I was talking to Lacroix before this race, and he mentioned that last year he used to come in, a lot of confidence, a lot of swagger, and now he's a little bit more humble, a little bit more down to earth. He says, I'm just coming in here to do my job, and if I end in victory lane, that's where I end up. And look at how much room he gave. Bumper clear, clear. And you can hear he gets cleared by a spotter. DJ Kennington goes by. He can drop back in line. Although that might have been DJ spotter saying he's clear in the 74. Interesting story behind that Castorol Edge Dodge, the 17 of DJ Kennington. That is a brand new race car, and it is the first race car built by White Motorsports. Of course, Dave White is the crew chief, longtime crew chief at DJK Racing. He's launched his own business, and that is the first Pinty Series car that he has built. No practice laps, and DJ Kennington went fastest in practice earlier today. I was going to say that it's an untested race car, which isn't very common, but as we know, DJ Kennington has kept a pretty busy schedule with his Monster Energy NASCAR Cup races. Here goes Cole Powell looking to the inside of Ranger. Powell ducks to the inside. Ranger loves that high groove, so he'll give him some fight in the Mopar number 27 upstairs, and he'll hang on to the top spot down the back chute. Cole Powell in the Kubota number three down low, though. Veteran spotter Jeff Gutler is working with Cole Powell, and I wonder if they had the conversation, but Andrew Ranger is as comfortable as any driver in the field at hanging out in that outside groove. He will continually fight back. The three in the lead, leading his first laps in the NASCAR Pinty Series. Cole Powell out front, but it's still in the early going. Number two of the NASCAR Pinty Series, the Ranking Construction 200, is brought to you by Mopar. We built it, we know it. By E3 Spark Plugs, born to burn. And by Pinty's, making great food fun. Back on the racetrack, and there has been no shortage of action. Donald Teach to the inside of Andrew Ranger for the second position. Remember, Teach was leading late in this one last year when he had victory robbed from him by Caden Lapsovich, who took the win. He was really disappointed that day, and he's really looking forward to this one. Donald Teach has been doing some late model racing in his native province of Quebec. He already has a win this year. I hope we get another look at Andrew Ranger. His arms were quite busy in the car, but I want to look at where his eyes were going as we see Brett Taylor in the iRacing 46 on the inside of Brad Graham in the 56. And that's a battle for 15th position. Brett Taylor, a, a great looking race car, and you mentioned it, the cool trickle Days of Thunder throwback scheme. Brett saying, you know what, I wanted to stand out in this race, and he definitely does. 
He's been hounding Brad Graham lap after lap. And I'll tell you, iRacing is not just a partner for, for Brett Taylor. He is an iRacer himself. And that, that is a really interesting deal that they have at CBRT with iRacing as we have a battle between teammates here for the third there. spot. Still there, corner. Still there, outside. Clear, clear. That's Steven Simmons telling DJ Kennington when he's clear of Andrew Ranger. Good hard racing, but team cars, you definitely don't want to have problems like that. And there is the other iRacing entry, the CBRT Pilati number one, Joey McComb. Looks to be issues under the hood of that one, and the Leland Industries 02 of Kerry Mix. And you can hear no fire in that motor. He's pulling the Ford Fusion behind the wall. We're going to go on board with Kerry Mix. Let's have a listen. Well, a cockpit full of smoke, you don't need you don't need acute hearing for that. No, you can went into turn number one and unfortunately ends the day. He started the day with handling difficulties and ends with a broken motor. So tough day for the 0-2 team, but they will be back. And look at this battle towards the front of the field. Fellows has lapped 45 of 200. <laughs> These guys are racing like crazy. Look at that. Kennington, Teach, Kevin Lacroix in the 74, Andrew Ranger in the 27. And that starts with a battle for second spot. Kennington has it. Donald Teach wants it. Everybody chasing the number three of Cole Powell, who's just out in the head. Uh, he's opened up about a 10-car length lead now, but this group is definitely super tight. And the last thing you want to see when you're battling for a top five position is Alex Tagliani closing in. He is fiercely competitive and super aggressive. Look at this, the race leader, Cole Powell, trying to put a lap on Brett Taylor and Brad Graham, and they're racing side by side. And Cole Powell getting a little physical with Brett Taylor, the Justin's Rookie of the Year candidate. There you see the 56 car, owned by Jim Bray, back in the lineup here. Brad Graham, a name synonymous with racing, stock car racing in Canada for many, many years, stepped back from the racing scene for a little while, and now back into it, asked him how many races he's going to do this year. He says, I'm not quite sure but he's going to try and do as many as he can. Great to see him on the racetrack. And I don't know if it was Cole Powell getting assertive or if it was Brett Taylor and Brad Graham making contact. So we were lucky we didn't have the leader taken out in that little melee. Look here now, a battle for third spot. You have Kevin Lacroix down to the inside as Donald Teague starts to drift back just a little bit in the 24. But there's racing all Jucasa Motor Speedway with 48 laps in the books. Cole Powell leads. Welcome back to the NASCAR Pinty Series from Jucasa Motor Speedway. I'm Dave Bradley along with Adam Ross, Todd Lewis, and Clinton Jeffrey are pit side. And we're on board with your points leader, LP Dumoulin, and his WeatherTech Dodge. He looks pretty comfortable inside the race car as he goes to the inside of Jason White, the driver from Sun Peaks, British Columbia. You know what's funny? Walking around the pits, uh, talking to these drivers, they all love this facility, but no more. Uh, no one loves it more than the 28 of Jason White, the 45-year-old in his 90th start, sits in 15th place right now. He's chasing 100 starts. He would be the first Western Canadian driver to accomplish that feat in the NASCAR Pinty Series. That's pretty unique. 90 starts and maybe 12 to 15 of them are in his time zone. That's a lot of trips across the country. He racks up the frequent flyer miles for sure as Cole Powell works in through lap traffic, but look at that lead. It has evaporated. Kevin Lacroix in the bumper to bumper 74 has caught him as the 0 4 of JF Dumoulin just ahead of your race leader. We're racing towards the first break. So if you're JF Dumoulin's spotter, you're saying, do we have to do to stay in front of the leader? Even though if he does get overtaken, he would get the free pass. And it's a little bit different setup for the free pass with a break as we watch the battle for fifth between Andrew Ranger in the 27 and Mark Antoine Cameron in the 22. There is a Spectre premium 04 of JF Dumoulin now pulling up to the outside to let the leaders go by but not much distance now between Cole Powell and Kevin Lacroix but that Spectra premium sponsorship is more than just a sponsorship they provide the radiators that go in this Dodge Challenger the 04 team for the Dumoulin competition team and they provide it for a few other drivers as well in NASCAR but it's great that they choose the NASCAR Pinty Series to do their research and development. Yeah it's a great platform, a great vehicle, don't mind the pun, <laughs> for testing their product. Yellow flag 
is out. This is the competition break. So the field will go under yellow, line up behind the caution truck, and then pit road will open to anyone who elects to go down. And what's interesting there, Dave, if you choose to stay on the racetrack, you stay in the order you're in. If you choose to go in the pits, you cannot gain or lose positions in the pits. So we might see some strategy here as the field lines up behind the all-new Dontram 1500 pace truck. Beautiful vehicle pacing all the races. Let's take a look at the VP Race Fuels statistics so far. Two leaders for one lead change. No cautions, Dave. Two retirees, Kerry Mix and Joey McComb. Now the pace truck stopped on the track and the teams are down in the pits. Clinton Jeffrey is there. Well, NASCAR has released the teams. Cole Powell brings the number three car in here. He's not saying too much on the radio. Been fairly relaxed but the crew is investigating a possible vibration on the right front they'll fuel them up and get them ready to roll they will top up the 17 car with fuel and then the crew will move in and do left side tires this time they will save the right side good years for the next scheduled stop the 74 of kevin lacroix interesting has decided not to take advantage of this competition caution and just like you said, Dave's strategy playing out in a hurry. The crew called an audible. They're only changing the left front on DJ Kennington. You're watching NASCAR on TSN. Welcome back to the second race of the 2018 NASCAR Pinty Series on TSN. We're working lap 79 of the Rankin Construction 200, and we're back under green here at Tucasa Motor Speedway. Kevin Lacroix leads the way in the 74. Crew chief Don Thompson Jr. elected to leave him on the racetrack, so did not come into the pits, inherits the lead, and he gets a good start. He leads all by himself as they come off at turn number four. Now, he was one of the faster cars on the track when we got that caution for the first break here today, but it's an interesting call from Don Thompson. It's a curious call. A couple of drivers stayed out, and we're seeing them in the mix right now. Lacroix with Alex Tagliani right behind him, and then you've got Adam Martin and Connor James, a couple of youngsters in the series. In fact, Connor James making his debut. He's on the inside in that white and red 97. Adam Martin on the outside in the Johnsonville 19, and that leaves LB Dumlin to wonder where to go, and Andrew Ranger way out of the group. Up into the marbles for sure. He's going to be doing some steering. Andrew Ranger had some problems in practice earlier on this afternoon where he got in some oil that was laid down on the racetrack and slapped the wall, but that was well before his pole qualifying effort, so the car still in good shape. He'll have to dust those tires off before he makes the charge back up to the front. It takes a couple of laps to get all that loose rubber off the tires to where you can really charge the corners again, so Andrew Ranger's a veteran. He understands that. But there you see a couple of drivers who did make pit stops, the 17 of DJ Kennington and the three of Cole Powell. So they're still mired back in the pack. Of course, DJ Kennington just taking that one tire for now, and uh, it doesn't appear to be that much of an advantage at this point. But up at the front, we're having a battle heating up for the lead. Kevin Lacroix leading with Tagliani right behind, but it looked like contact back for about the fourth and fifth position behind the race leaders. That's Adam Martin and L.P. Dumoulin, who are battling hard for fourth spot. Yeah, right, making some contact there, tucked in behind the 79 of Pete Shepard. And Adam Martin in his Johnsonville Ford, he was fifth fastest in practice, Dave, today. Uh, that's got to be the, the, the best he's practiced in his NASCAR career. Signing on a new deal this year with Dave Jacobs racing in the Johnsonville Ford Fusion, taking over the seat of last year's champion, Alex LeBay, and now battle for fifth. He's up in that high group, which isn't really the best spot so far here. It'll come in a little bit later on. Donald Teach will take over in the Circuit Acura number 24. DJ Kennington gonna get through as well. Cole Powell likely will do the same. You can make the outside work, but at this point, you don't want to drive that hard. What he really wants to do is find an opening. It's too early in the race to be abusing your tires and your brakes. On board now, the youngster, Adam Martin. And that's a good move. Drop into line behind the three of Cole Powell. Pete Shepard now sliding back on the outside of the National Exhaust number 79. They had a ton of problems in practice earlier on today, just trying to get bite in the back end of that car. It just always wanted to twitch loose every time he got back on the power. When he got off the power, it just it didn't really want to stick. You know, and twitch, wow, nearly contact with Andrew Ranger. And twitch is exactly the word Pete 
Shepard used. He said, you can barely drive the race car. It's really difficult to, to attack the corners, and you have to do that. And Pete Shepard, not a new driver to these types of cars at all. He's been out of the seat in the NASCAR PT Series for several years, but when he left, he was having a blistering season. I believe he had three race wins in four starts that year. He would probably have the best winning percentage of anyone in NASCAR. You know, if you base it on the amount of races he's run and the amount of races he's won, definitely among the top. Todd Lewis is in Brad Graham's pit. Yeah, guys, the crew scrambled over to have a look. They're trying to find out what the problem is underneath the hood. Brad Graham slowed in that 56 machine out on track. Now they think it's a fluid problem. Well, Mike Knott and the, the beard, the man with the beard and crew trying to get him back out on track. And we got problems as Donald Teach appears as though he had a tire go down turn number four and made contact with the wall. That was an unusual. I don't think he made contact with Andrew Ranger there. He was just working the outside of Ranger and the car veered off to the right. Big damage to the right front as he did slap the outside wall in the Surpre Acura. Chevy Camaro, let's have another look. They did go three wide, but no contact there. And well, everything looks fine here. Drives down into the corner. Yeah, yeah, something just flattened right front or something broke in the steering center, careening into the wall. And judging by the way it came down pit road, that is race ending damage for Donald Teach. You're watching NASCAR on TSA. We're in Nell's Corners, Ontario, where 52 years ago, ground was broken on a half-mile dirt oval. Over the years, it became a 5 eighths of a mile asphalt track where legends raced and new heroes were born. Tonight, we're possibly watching future heroes of our sport. Just over halfway, Kevin Lacroix continues to lead as we're back under green in the ranking construction 200. He really has no comfort zone out there. Alex Tagliani all over the back bumper, and don't look behind him, but there's at least four or five cars charging towards the front. Not Alex Tagliani, Lowe's EpiPen Chevrolet, a brand new race car as well. Tyler Case saying they had a couple bucks to work out in practice, but it was working pretty good. And Alex Tagliani, most importantly, was very happy with the way it drove. It's not uncommon to see Tyler Case and the 18 team doing more work on their race car than any other team. They make a lot of adjustments, a lot of changes, but once they get it right for Tagliani, watch out. See a couple battles in our split screen. Battle for fourth. Couple teammates and battle for seventh amongst a couple teammates. The DJK crew on your left hand screen. And you've got the Dave Jacobs racing teams uh, battling for seventh. Pete Shepard up on the outside of Adam Martin. We talked about how you could run that outside, Dave. It's just about time to start racing hard. We're into the final 100 laps. For if Connor James let someone go by, he's letting six cars go by. So now you've got to get up on the wheel. You've got to run that outside groove and start stressing these Goodyear tires. There you see Connor James up on the outside of the 04 of JF Jumala in the Spectra Premium Dodge Challenger. Connor James is no stranger to racing. He's raced late models and the Ontario Sportsman Series as well. But his teammate just in behind him there, the 95 of Anthony Simone. That's actually the car owner. Fantastic racing out here on the racetrack, Dave. One driver not involved is the driver of the 24 car. Where are Donald T's Donald? This place owe you something. Two races in a row with issues here today. What happened out there? Well, I think we don't have the, 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 the good setup for the race. And I told uh, my crew chief before the race, uh, I think we just passed by and uh, the car wasn't fast, you know. Not the car to win today. And uh, we were probably blew a tire, so we hit the wall. The wall. Autodrome Short here is the next race. You've got a lot of experience there. What do you need to do to rebound? A win, that's all, you know. Uh, I was uh, expecting the podium minimum here, a win, make some points. And you know, right now we're gonna be very far away than standing, so we'll see at the air what we can, what, what can we do. Donald Teach running the full season in the NASCAR Pinty Series as we look back up front, battling
battle for a second now between the 18 of Alex Tagliani and the Wilpar Dodge, the pole sitter from today. Andrew Ranger has worked his way back up front. Ranger running almost the identical line to Tagliani, a little bit higher. So he's up higher through the corner to drive down the track coming off the corner. Couple drivers who have had their sleeves rolled up all day long so far. The 47 of LP Dumoulin, the WeatherTech Dodge, and the Castrol Edge Dodge of DJ Kennington. They really haven't had any clean air to deal with all day long. No, they've been busy the entire time. Did you see Alex Tagliani wash up the track there in the corner? So Andrew Ranger putting on the pressure. I think Tag trying some different things in the race car. Some of it's working, some of it not. Ranger has been trying to run that outside lane, and, and Alex Tagliani sort of washes up in the middle of the corner and diamonds it off on exit, so it sort of stalls the run by Andrew Ranger. As we run on board with Cole Powell briefly, but there's the 22 of Mark Antoine Cameron battling with the 19 of Adam Martin. That's a battle for eighth spot. Adam Martin's been up on the outside probably most of the second half of this race so far. Now Cameron ain't going to get by. He'll duck in just in front of Connor James. Paye Chevrolet sponsor number 22. Mark Antoine Cameron hasn't raced on an oval in three years. He's keeping his nose clean so far today here at Jucasa Motor Speedway. Kevin Lacroix from saint Estache, Quebec, leads the rank in construction 200 here at Jucasa Motor Speedway. Nothing but clean track out in front of the Dodge Challenger. Were, did my eyes deceive me or did Lacroix just get really loose in that turn, Dave? <laughs> he did a big wiggle off of turn number two. It settled down. He's got a significant gap now over second place. Alex Tagliani started back in sixth spot. Has moved up nicely in the Chevrolet Camaro. Part of the fun of watching Kevin Lacroix drive is he drives at 100% every lap. Whether he's out in front by 10 car lengths or whether he's in the pack, you're always going to get 110% effort. We continue our look back through the field. The 27 of Andrew Ranger sits in a somewhat comfortable third spot. I say somewhat because he has the WeatherTech Dodge, the 47 of LP Dumoulin, breathing down the back of his neck. Dumoulin has been solid this race near the front. Cole Powell, who led much of the early stage of this race, rounds out the top five right now, and savvy veteran DJ Kennington chasing him down, looking to get into the top five. Powell has really impressed me all race long. He started in third, back in fifth, but remember, he made a pit stop during the first break. He looks very comfortable behind the wheel of an Ascar Pinty Series car in his first oval start. I love watching this battle with Adam Martin. And the 79 of Pete Shepard as they duke it out for eighth. That paint scheme of Pete Shepard, it has won races here before Dave Bradley with Pete Shepard Jr. behind the wheel at the old Cayuga Speedway. Adam Martin, big time loose in the Johnsonville number 19. He gathers it up and carries on as Mark Antoine Cameron in the number 22 battled for sixth spot with DJ Kenton. And that's great information Stephen Simmons gave. No pressure behind. So if you let him by, get back in the racing groove, regroup from there, we're approaching the next competition break, Dave. DJ Kennington is now a veteran of the NASCAR Pinty Series. He was a young gun for seemingly so long. And problems on the 47, you see the hands moving of LP Dumoulin. It looks like something has gone major. Yeah, it looks like a tire. Right rear is down. You can see it moving along the casing. As he works in, whoa, he almost goes for a loop in turn number one. So uh, lap 141, the break is coming up. So if we can hang in there for this yellow to come out, but my goodness. He needs that tire to stay together in the 47. LP Dumoulin has his hands full trying to keep it going in a straight line. No caution. If we go back to the in car, you could hear it flopping around. Touch the wall, it looks like. I don't know if that was him hitting the wall or the tire popping there that we could hear, but there is not much left of the rubber on the right rear. We're on lap 145, so he has been lapped by the race leader, Dave, but if he had to come down pit road and stop, you'd lose easily three laps. And the brake caution should be coming out any time soon. We are told somewhere around the 145 lap mark is when that caution would be shown. 
LP Dumoulin is trying to hang on with a flat right rear tire as we ride on board sixth place and now caution comes out. So the yellow flag is out and LP Dumoulin is actually two laps behind, but depending when, well there was Kevin Lacroix going by right there. Have another look, this is on board the 47. Yeah, he did make contact. You saw the uh, black mark on the outside wall. So that's what caused the right rear to go down. The spotters high above the tower at Jucasa Motor Speedway. They've been busy tonight. The cars are all on pit lane and the officials have released them. Now the crews don't really have to hurry, but you don't want to make a mistake on pit road. Todd is down there amongst all the action. Todd? So far the strategy is working out just right for the 74 team. The fuel has gone in. The crew will now move over and change to four fresh Goodyears. Kevin Lacroix will have the lead and the freshest tires when we return to green. Behind him, the 47 of LP Dumoulin did survive to the competition caution. The crew can now change that shredded tire. LP did a great job hanging on as the Tag Miami number 18 crew making sure that car is packed full of fuel. Lots of work going on pit road. We'll be back with more NASCAR racing. Riding on board the number 46 of Calgary, Alberta's Brett Taylor. And only his second oval start. He is in to the top 10 here at the ranking construction 200. Having a decent showing here this evening. And, you know, he's getting experience, and that's what's important. You can almost see his confidence growing as you watch him race with other drivers tonight. We should mention, too, that the 04 of JF Dumoulin is on pit road. Todd Lewis is down there and looking into his issues, but it's been a tough evening for the Spectra Premium Dodge Challenger driver. The all-new Dodge Ram 1500 pace truck on pit road, and we're looking for green back up and running here at Jucasa Motor Speedway. And have a look there. LP Dumoulin dropped to the inside, past a whole row of cars heading down into turn number one. Now the 95 of Anthony Simone is several laps down, but he passed a couple cars before the start finish line, so well, lead, wait for the word. Lead lap or not, as we look at it, Andrew Ranger to the inside of town. Oh, a little bit of contact. Lead oh, lap or not, you have to maintain your line until oh, you cross the start finish line. And we're getting word over NASCAR radio, LB Dumoulin being assessed a drive through penalty. And it looks like Alex Tagliani not happy with the aggressiveness of that pass by Andrew Ranger. A little bump back by the driver of the EpiPen number 18. And here comes the 47 of LP Jumelain. I don't know if you can go all the way down pit lane at pit road speed limit. You have to go all the way around the corner and turn one, almost to turn two, before you can accelerate again. I don't know if he's going to stay on the lead lap. Look at this train race. The 22, 17, and 3 are almost tied together. And Todd's got an update on the Dumoulin team. Todd? Yeah, guys, the 04 remains on pit road here. Even after the track has gone back to green, it's a right front wheel bearing the problem for J.F. Dumoulin. The crew's trying to get it repaired and return him back out onto the speedway. Just a frustrating night for J.F. Dumoulin, who, if you remember, had a great run here last fall. He did, finished inside the top five and was looking for big things once again in another stop here at Jucasa Motor Speedway. It's, we pick up a battle for seventh spot. A couple rookies involved with Connor James, Brett Taylor, and then a not-so-rookie in the 79 of Pete Shepard, but they're having a pretty good dice. Yeah, a little bit further back than Pete Shepard would like to be in this race, but great to see him back on track. Look at Cole Powell in that three machine trying to get back to the front. He led so many laps earlier. This is some tough competition. He's got to get around if he wants to challenge for a win. And that car is new to the Eddie Hackinson Racing Stable. It is not a brand new chassis, but the crew has reworked it, so it's relatively new. And Cole Powell, of course, coming out of the NASCAR modified ranks where he's essentially cut his teeth. He's like, these cars are a lot bigger, heavier, harder to stop. It's a lot different feeling on an oval. So he's still getting used to the feeling of these cars. Yeah, he's getting used to it pretty well. Cameron slipped a little bit there in the corner. Let's see if Cole Powell can take advantage. See the brakes glowing on the Pie Chevrolet number 22. And Powell may have got into the back bumper I, of Cameron. I don't know if he hit Cameron or if he forced him just to drive deeper in the corner than the car would hold. And he just slid up enough, Powell drove through. And sometimes you can do as much with a rear view mirror as you can with the front bumper. 
On board now, the driver of the Kubota, number three, Cole Powell, and Tagliani gets very, very close to the front stretch wall as we ride on board the EpiPen number 18. Don't see his eyes darting to the mirror this time. Maybe he figures Cole Powell's a little bit further back than he needs to worry about. Here's Connor James getting closer to Brett Taylor in the 46. He's given a great drive to that SSG Gloves number 97. You know what? This is a learning race for Connor James. He has learned at this point. Now Adam Martin's going to sneak by as James does a little wiggle for eighth spot. But James coming out of here with a clean car is exactly what he needs. And I think what happened, he looked him out a challenge on Taylor and then checked up just a little bit. You check up a little bit, someone's going to pounce. So he lost another spot to Adam Martin, but those are the ways you learn in these races, Dave. Looking back up to this battle, towards the front of the field, Cole Powell has a mirror filled with a 22 of Mark Antoine Cameron as Powell made his way through, but Cameron not giving up. The 74 of Kevin Lacroix, the bumper to bumper dodge continues out in front of this one. Very, very stout race car playing a little strategy from Don Thompson Jr., his crew chief, in selecting four tires on his last pit stop. We look at this battle for the eighth spot between Brett Taylor and Adam Martin. Now let's go back to Mark Antoine Cameron starting to pull back towards the rear bumper of Cole Powell. <laughs> this is when you know for sure if Cole Powell used the bumper, because when a driver catches <laughs> back up, they usually return the favor. Just a little bump to say I wasn't really happy with the way you passed me, but you can see the gap now is not huge for Kevin Lacroix. He seems to have settled into a rhythm. He has a gap back to Andrew Ranger, who sits in second spot in the Mopar number 27. He's not running away with it, but he's not letting these drivers catch him either. Second through fifth is really accordioned, but all the drivers from second to fifth, right now about a tenth of a second faster a lap than Kevin Lacroix. It, it's not really quick enough to get there as quick as they want to. Plus, they're all battling with each other. Remember last fall, and now we have a battle for second spot as Tagliani takes a look to the inside of the 27 of Andrew Ranger. I was going to say last fall, Kevin Lacroix finishing in the top five, fourth spot for the driver of the 74, and he was looking for much more here today. He's really looking for a win on an oval track. It is so important to this driver. And look at that, Tagliani making a move. Cole Powell was looking to the inside of Tag. So Tagliani has to play some defense down into turn one, and Andrew Ranger running that outside groove, Dave. It's not quite as fast, but you're easier on the brakes, easier on the throttle up there, so you're less prone to make a mistake. High, wide, and handsome. That's where the Mopar Dodge loves to run. It doesn't matter if it's a quarter-mile bull ring or a five-eighths of a mile track here at Jucasa Motor Speedway. You will find that Mopar Dodge up on the outside with the M1 spec motor underneath the hood making plenty of horsepower, and yeah, it's a Hemi. Whoa, tackling any end of the left rear corner of Ranger. They make contact, Tagliani gets the spot. Smoke from the right front of Alex Tagliani as those two made some heavy contact off turn number four. Look at Ranger up on the outside though, powering down the back straightaway, hanging on to second spot, now he's in the troubles. I think Ranger's got bigger problems than that. That could be a flat left oh, rear right behind the band, it's straight ahead. Let's have a look at this again. Tagliani up in the four, just like we said. Got into the left rear Ranger. You have to get on the throttle so much harder on the inside to get that run. The front end wouldn't hold it. And now Andrew Ranger in the 27 back to fifth spot. And I don't think he does have a tire going down. It might have just been the dirty track, the marbles on his tires. He's gotten those sh shaken off, and now he's back in the racing groove and holding his own. I hate to agree with you, Dave, but you might be right. <laughs> You really do. That hurts me to say. The battle for second with the run up. Ken Katu, longtime spotter for Scott Steckley, spotting for Alex Tagliani, giving him great information.
almost like, yeah, there is a tire down the Mopar 27 of Andrew Ranger, a slide through the turn as he struggles to hang on. Have a listen. That tire doing damage with every rotation. No caution yet, and now it comes out. Some debris on the track. The reason for this caution is that tire came apart and took some parts off the Mopar Dodge. And that was the race leader, Kevin Lacroix, right behind Ranger. So that means Ranger still on the lead lap, Dave. And we've got a few laps to go to settle the score here at Tucasa Motor Speedway. You're watching NASCAR racing on TSN. We have five laps to go here in the ranking construction 200 here at Tucasa Motor Speedway. A shootout to the checkered flag and we're about to go green as the car is off of turn number four. Green flag is back up in the air. We're back underway. That was a slow, slow restart. Big advantage for Kevin Lacroix. He fires hard, gets out even just that half car length is a big deal because he's got clear racetrack. Few of the cars power sliding off of turn number two and down the back chute. Now look at Cole Powell tucked underneath the back bumper of the 18 of Alex Tagliani. Cole Powell chomping at the bit. And our cars around, two of them, Adam Martin and the 46 of Brett Taylor. Caution once again. Brett Taylor able to pull away. Adam Martin going to go a lap down. What a shame for the Johnsonville driver. Now let's ride on board the number 19, see what happened. There's two drivers racing for the same real estate. Yeah, yeah. Taylor, if you go by the white line and the width of the cars, Brett Taylor might have squeezed him off a little hard. And this close to the end of the race, nobody's going to give an inch. Final instructions, you saw it coming from Don Thompson Jr. as we get set for a green-white checkered, but the Pinty's wing-eating contest happened a little earlier, Adam. Yeah, poor Brock on the, on the far right. He decided he was just in it for show, but it was Tanner taking home the win. He was confident from the start, Dave. The big win, getting all those tasty Pinty's wings for sure. 12 cars on the lead lap. The 28 of Jason White back on the lead lap, sitting in 12th spot as we get set for a green-white checker to settle the rank in construction 200 here at Tucasa Motor Speedway. NASCAR overtime, Kevin Lacroix gets a great start, and Alex Tagliani immediately to the bottom groove. Top three all jump in single file. Here comes Cole Powell taking a look for second down the back straightaway, and he will steal it away from the 18 of Tagliani. I can't believe how Cole Powell was able to make such aggressive moves in a car he really hasn't raced. Can he catch he has half a lap to do it as they head down the back straightaway. Cole Powell in the shadow of the 74. The total lubricants bumper to bumper. Dodge Challenger working his way through four for the final time. And Kevin Lacroix will finally win on an oval. What a close battle too. Brett Taylor edges Pete Shepard at the line. Wow! A top 10 finish for the Justin's Rookie of the Year competitor, but congratulations all around in the 74 pit. We'll be back and talk with him. Moments ago, Kevin Lacroix celebrated his first oval win in 33 starts in the NASCAR Pinty Series. He has nine wins now in his NASCAR career, and he brings us today's Mopar winning moment. Todd is with the winner in victory lane. Kevin Lacroix with a smile on his face, clearly visible. Struggles a little bit to climb out of the cockpit of that number 74. But yeah, it is a jubilant celebration for he and the team that have worked so hard to get this first victory on an oval. They have been close before. They have struggled, and finally here at Jucasa Speedway, they have achieved that goal of getting an oval victory. Man, did you have a strong car all night tonight. Oh, yeah. Uh, we've been working on that car for the past two years, and uh, we were there last year almost, and now I think that uh, this year is uh, super fast, really. It feels like I may never lose again, but <laughs> for sure I will. But uh, the car is super uh, ovals, road course, uh, bring it on. What a great night for Kevin Lacroix, who is a winner here at Jucasa Speedway. And 
we'll take a look at tonight's top 10. Solid run by Mark Antoine Cameron in fourth, and you mentioned Brett Taylor earlier. How about Andrew Ranger's recovery from a flat tire to a top five finish? And do you love Kevin Lacroix's confidence, Dave? Also love the top 10 for Connor James in his first start. Clinton? With Cole Powell, Cole, what a drive for you tonight. you got to be pleased. This team gave you an amazing ride this evening. Oh, they sure did, man. This EHR team, I can't thank them enough. This thing was a rocket ship. We led a bunch of laps up front uh, at the start of the race, dropped back to seventh. I had a vibration. That's why we had to pit on that first segment. Drove back up to second. I spun the tires a little bit on that re last restart. I wanted this so bad, but uh, second place is cars in one piece. We can work on it. I have a feeling uh, we're going to do some special things here uh, this, this summer with uh, EHR, Kubota, and Premier Trucking. If you have a look on the car, there's there's really no other sponsors, so we're looking for uh, to secure some marketing to finish the rest of this year. This is an awesome team. I think we can really pull something special out of the hat. Soul drive for Cole Powell here tonight. Well, he's absolutely right as we'll take a look at the point standings and Cole Powell picks up a couple spots. He sits in fourth. Kevin Lacroix, your new points leader in the 74. Johnson's Rookie of the Year contender Brett Taylor back there in eighth. Adam Martin ninth in the Johnsonville Ford. Beautiful night for racing is the big smiles in victory lane for the 74 of Kevin Lacroix. This NASCAR on TSN race has been brought to you by VP Race Fuels by Honey Goo from Clean Flow on Honey of a Lube. And by Total Quartz Engine Oil. For that man, it must feel like forever to taste this moment. Kevin Lacroix in victory lane. A proud moment for Lacroix. Some great donuts. And from here, we go to the bull ring of Autodrome Chaudière. And for all of us here at Fuel Media Lab, we'll see you in Quebec. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our fans for your support, and we hope you enjoyed today's broadcast.